Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm Tom Sinclair, that vid blaster guy, coming to you with another great opportunity to talk about vid blaster. Somebody was giving me some some heat the other day. Said, you know, you need to show more of the stuff, more of the camera. And I was like, well, <laughs> we're we're really kind of a software show, <laughs> but really we're a we're a live video production show using VidBlaster and all the other accessories that go with it in order to produce really quality video. Welcome to the show. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. I'll remind you of that again later. And if you're watching live, thanks so much. The neat thing about watching live is you can hang out in the chat room and chat with the, all the other guys. And sometimes they misbehave and talk about things that I'm not even talking about. In fact, they'll just ignore me altogether. But lots of good information gets shared there, and, and half the time they're correcting me. So a uh, hat tip to the, to the guys in chat. Thank you for being there today. Today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about VidBlaster, of course, but we're, we're still kind of driving home the point that one guy with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. Now, it helps to have the right equipment. I mean, that makes all the difference in the world. I was talking to my, my buddy, R.J. Murdoch, over in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and back before the first of the year, he had done an NCAA uh, Division I men's basketball tournament that was there on the Emerald Coast of Florida, beautiful place over Destin and Fort Walton Beach. The, 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 the sand on the beach is just like sugar. It's so white. It's just beautiful. Anyway, he had done this basketball game, and I think he said he used four cameras in the game, and of course had instant replay, had, uh, had two fixed cameras, and, and so those got you know half court left, half court right, and then two cameras that were operated by him, one that it was a wide shot, and one that was on the same tripod, but was a narrow shot. And then I guess with his, with his left hand, he directed the cameras, with his right hand, he switched the shots. And then I guess somehow he kept up with the score. I don't know. But he did the whole thing as a one-man production. Four-camera shoot, instant replay, multiple cams, the whole nine yards for Division I men's basketball. And he ended up doing the whole tournament except the finals, and CBS Sports picked up the finals. So he was, he was treading in some deep water and uh, some rarefied air, as they say. But it can be done. One guy with one PC can do it. You think about all the opportunities there are to bring information, to bring content to a wider audience, whether it's your local civic clubs. Uh, you know, the Flower Club is having a flower show. You know, what about all the folks that didn't get to go? Would they like to see that? And with, with the, the wireless technology we've got now where your phone can be a Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, why not? You can do it. You can get great uplink speeds um, if you don't mind burning up your data that way. City council meetings, local sporting events for high school or junior high school, middle school, club sports, um, small college sports, even big college sports. It's, it's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. And there's an audience out there. There's an audience out there. And one guy and it can't be a cow, but one guy with one PC and the right setup can do a really awesome broadcast. That's the whole idea behind this show, is to encourage you to make your broadcast awesome. And the, one of the ways that I do it is I get to make all the mistakes, <laughs> and then I can tell you about them so that hopefully you don't have to make them. You don't have to make them. You don't want to hear about today. You know, the rule is always don't ever... Tinker around with your setup on show day. Don't install new software. Don't install new hardware. Don't do anything that's going to potentially put a glitch in the mix somehow. And, of course, I broke that rule today. Uh, installed a new a couple of new capture cards. You know, I was testing them to see if they were going to work right. For some reason, they didn't work the way I'd hoped them to, hope they would, so I pulled them back out and whew, dodged a bullet. You know, no problems. Um, but all that is a, is a way, a long way of saying I want to introduce our subject for the day in VidBlaster. We're going to talk about the big workhorse in VidBlaster, the one module in VidBlaster 
that does all sorts of stuff. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of VidBlaster modules. And let's see if the guys in the chat room have figured out which one it is yet. No, they're talking about something else. <laughs> There's no counting for taste. The one module, I'm giving them another second here, the one module that, uh, that you can use to do all sorts of stuff is a module called, still waiting, still waiting for the chat room, guys. No, they're not going to be there. Okay. It's called the Effect Module. And it's been around VidBlaster since early, early, early on. The Effect Module is what allowed VidBlaster... Um, Oh, yeah, some other people are saying, oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about. That's the guys in the chat. Yeah, yeah. The effect module was around early on and would do little things like take two cameras and put them side by side. In fact, I use that same feature in pre-show when I show myself and my chat room side by side. So you can see this is kind of what we do in pre-show is that we've got, for the folks that don't have the chat for some reason, can't see the chat, we've got it side by side. And, uh, and they can see that, and that's two cameras. The, this camera over here where I am, and then the camera over here is actually a screen capture of um, a Chrome window that has the, uh, the chat room in it. Um, so let's go back to our main shot. There we go. So the side-by-side -side cameras, and that's actually some, an, an effect called split vertical corrected. Uh, and so basically it's taking the center part of this camera image and sliding it over to the side and then taking the center part of the other camera image and bringing it over to that side. Um, one of the other effects that I think is kind of a cool effect, and I, I never ever use it, but I bet you could figure out a way to use it. One of the, the effects is something called grayscale. And the grayscale effect is the effect that basically takes your show and makes it black and white. So here we are, black and white. We're back in the old days of black and white TV. You could do a whole show. Wouldn't that be neat to do a whole show in black and white? I mean, whenever I, I think about the photographers, photographers today are still shooting black and white because it brings out certain parts of the image that otherwise would get Eh, probably not hidden, but uh, but your eye would be distracted by the color other places. Um, so so black and white, or or it's called gray the grayscale effect in the effects module. We were having a interest. I was actually in the chat room yesterday for another show. Um, uh, Stephen Haywood, the Tech Buzz guy, <laughs> the TechBuzz.net, uh, does a show on Mondays or excuse me, Tuesdays, called um, Broadcast Now. And he's done it off and on for a couple of years, has had several different uh, kind of co-hosts over the years. And he was talking about, uh, oh, oh, I know, he had Amnon Nissan. You remember Amnon from uh, Computers 2K Now. And Amnon has a great Sunday morning uh, TV talk show about computers and tech stuff called Computers 2K. Now you can find him at Amnon, excuse me, at NissanCommunications.com. And he also does other shows on his show. He's used VidBlaster since the early days. And, and they were kind of ribbing him because his image was backwards. And you could actually tell because he had an American patch, American flag patch on his sleeve and it was backwards. Generally, uh, when you have stars and stripes, um, you've got the, uh, the, 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 the stars are in this portion of the flag, and then the stripes are, are, are over in this portion. And his was reversed. And so they were chiding him because his image was reversed. And he said he'd done that intentionally because uh, something with another show host, and he wanted to have himself oriented properly with her, so he just flipped his image. And, uh, and, they, and he was actually using VidBlaster to supply the video to Skype for that interview. And so they were saying, oh, well, you know, VidBlaster's got it backwards. Um, and no, it wasn't VidBlaster that had it backwards, and we were talking about it kind of in, in chat. And, um, and I said, you know, VidBlaster can't even flip an image. And I was wrong. I mean, what Amnon had done is he flipped the, flipped the reversed the image um, in his capture card. And, and that's where he'd done it. But it's actually an effect 
in the um, in the effect module and let's see if we can do it right here yep there we go and so now we've flipped the image we've reversed the image in the effect module and I guess we could do what if we did effect one and effect seven then I could have a conversation with myself or it would kind of be like a mirror image now ooh. now that's a pretty weird look right there <laughs> sorry you know vidblaster is a, vidblaster is a tool for professionals and typically doesn't have a lot of what i call kind of you know not not hokey stuff not not but showy stuff uh, i mean it's 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 cut um, you know, maybe a little bit of dissolve, um, but let's, you know, let's do it the way the pros do it in, in TV. Uh, let's not have a lot of flaky stuff like kids would use on Skype. But, you know, VidBlaster does, if you know how to do it, have the ability to make Tom Sinclair headless. Now there's a shot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just too funny. That's just too funny. Oh my goodness, oh my, I think I've killed my live audience. So those of you watching on YouTube, I won't do anything gross like that again. Um, but that was to use the effect module. And uh, let's, let's, do, let's do a little fun stuff here. We're gonna add a module and we're gonna set it up for screen capture and I'll just show you how I did that. So if you, if you ever want to, to do anything crazy like that, um, we're going to select this area right here. That ought to be enough. And so this is, uh, let me get this out of the way. Um, right above my head, right there, is, the, is the, the program module. And I'll move it from side to side. You can see it right there. So just kind of, it's, it's kind of doing the infinity thing right there. Don't pay any attention to that. But here's the effects module over here and it's set to mirror horizontal and it takes effect one which is my shot right here and mirrors it and then I'm using another effect module right here to do split vertical corrected for the effect module number one which is the left side person that one right there and then effect seven the right side person which is that effect right there and basically I just selected it from the drop downs right over here. And if we wanted to go back to grayscale, we would go back to grayscale there. So now we end up with a gray and a, and a white Thompson. Actually, yeah, it's not even flipped. We'd have to use another effect module for that. Um, but we'll go back to, uh, oop, I got ahead of myself there. Go back to mirror horizontal. There we go. Okay, so um, the effect module is a great way of doing a lot of things that you w probably wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Um, and let me, uh, let me bring that effect module in just kind of almost isolated by itself. Uh, let's see, yeah, there we go. Um, so I can drop down, and there's a little slider here on the right. And I've got lots of different effects. We'll just go through them. Chroma key, we've talked about a lot. In fact, I've got a video up on it. If you go to YouTube um, and go to, um, actually, there's a whole Chroma key playlist on YouTube. And you can look at all the different ways that we've played with Chroma key. There's our grayscale. Uh, there's the mirror horizontal. And then mix allows you to essentially to mix two different modules in the same place. So if I set mix, I would be mixing the effect module number one, and I'll drag that one over here so you can see it. That's the effect module number one with camera five, and let me drag that over. That's camera five, and it gives this kind of flaky image like there's something wrong with my green screen. Um, but you can mix anything. You can mix any two modules if you wanted to have a, a, a kind of a unique image, you could do that. Uh, so let's go back here. We'll take that mix off. 
Uh, the next thing is picture in picture and picture in picture fix, fixed aspect ratio. And we have, we have done some demos on those in the past, so we're not going to go through those. One that we haven't done recently is source overlay. And source overlay is kind of neat because it allows you to take, um, let's see, we're going to take effect one, which is this shot right here. This is effect one shot. And we're going to add an overlay to it. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Um, to it, and it's going to be overlay, let's say overlay number seven. Um, so we're going to end up with this shot as one single shot. Um, so this is the, the, uh, the, the, the effect one, which is the chroma key in the background, um, with camera five, which is me in the foreground, then with overlay seven overlaid onto the front of it, um, and it's all one module. So, it's, so, so let's see, let's go back to this shot. This is effect one, and I can add the overlay onto it. I can just click on the overlay itself and turn it off and on. But if I wanted to have a shot where if I just went straight to the shot, I could take this shot, this effects module, uh, right here, and would have the overlay portion already plugged into it. And that's called source overlay. And currently you can do it with one overlay. I've put in a feature request with Mike Versteeg in the VidBlaster forum, support forum, to, uh, to have multiple sources uh, all overlay at the same time. No reason not to, I don't think. Um, after that comes all sorts of splits. And this is where we're combining uh, two or th three or four camera sources, or actually any other video source, into one. So split horizontal would show, let's, 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 let's put something else like um, camera five. Where's camera five? Camera five, there we go. So here's, here's kind of another little funky feature where, you know, actually this green port on the bottom is camera five and the overlay, uh, the, the chroma key part on the top is effect seven, um, but it's, it's split in that sense. Uh, split corrected, now there are two of me. If I hunch down a little bit, it's taking the center of that image. Um, that split horizontal corrected, and then there's split quad, and so if I were to add, let's see, let's come over here and I'll show you. I right click this, I can add another source. In this case, uh, let's add, uh, uh, where is it? Source three is gonna be still store three, which is that background image. And then right click it again for source four. And that's gonna be, uh, let's make that camera four. So we end up, we'll transition that one to program. So we'll end up with four different windows. Um, and you can also actually make an overlay. For example, if you had four guests and you were bringing, or yourself and three guests, you could bring in them individually in Skype windows and then have actually one single, and I've done this, it was really pretty cool, have one single overlay that overlays all four of these windows, and then under each window, it has an individual lower third for that particular guest. Um, and obviously, you'd have to plan all that out in advance in order to get it to work. So that's split quad, and then split side by side is just going to take our, our two images, and we'll flip this one up here. This is one that we used from our show two weeks ago. Um, where this is split side by side with uh, effect one on the left, camera five on the right, and then, let's go back to this shot, I have put in a background which is still store four. Now still store four is a, an image, and I'll show you what that image looks like. That's that image. So that's the background over which we're overlaying these, these split cameras side by side. Now, the, here on the on the left side, <laughs> it's always opposite. Um, on the left side, 
I've, I've got the, the backdrop that Martin made for me, and then I'm also using the still store as the backdrop. And so it's a little bit of a busy background. If I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't do it exactly like that. Um, but you know how it is, you're always in a hurry. Um, so that was the split side by side with the background. Of course, you can set a transition here. I've set it for dissolve slow so that when I go to this, it doesn't just flash right to it. And we'll go back to the camera. You notice how that one clicked back pretty quickly. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the drop down, and we've got a split triple. And so in this case, we'll cut to the. You can see the split triple is going to give you uh, source one on the left side, source 2 on the right side, and then source 3 is going to be the bottom side. So it's kind of like a quad except if you've got somebody on the bottom they get the whole thing. And split vertical, and let's use a different one here so it makes a little more sense. It doesn't look so flaky. We'll put, yeah there we go. So basically it's just taking half of the camera image and and letting it show and this is uh, this is um, kind of the the same thing split vertical corrected and now it's centering the image of each one and I actually skipped over one which is split vertical 3d um, with a backdrop and let's take the background out of that because it's not just a, it's not a very good background but you can see that's that's kind of kind of weird looking um, I can't imagine I would ever use something like that. Although, you know, you never know. Um, and those are, those, all these are fixed angles. You can't adjust these angles. They just sit there. And that's called split vertical 3D. And so we'll skip that one. Split vertical corrected. We were just there. Split vertical triple corrected. And what that's going to give us is three cameras in one. So let's go back to say our source 2 is going to be camera 5 and so we've got you can actually have three shots um, you know you see this on CNN sometimes sometimes they'll do individual windows but sometimes they'll just divide the screen up into thirds and have, excuse me and have three different three different third parts and then do you know one simple uh, lower third that can go under all three of them um, and I think that brings us to the end of, yeah, that's the end. The end of what our options are. So we've got the, we've got chroma key, which again is a separate tutorial, grayscale, uh, the mirror horizontal, the mix, the picture in picture we've done as a separate tutorial. And you can go to YouTube and see those. And then source overlay allows you to have the lower third built into the shot. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different splits um, as choices of how to show whatever you want to show. So with those nine different choices, and, and the nice thing about these is that they're, they're preset. That is, they're done. You don't have to adjust boxes. You don't have to calculate. You don't have to, um, you don't have to draw angles. Uh, draw, draw boxes, you don't have to calculate you know, how many pixels we need to adjust, they're done and you just select them. Which means that you can make things happen very quickly and they happen consistently. And so if you're drawing, if you're making a, uh, a lower third um, and today you know, let's say we're shooting 864 by 480 um, you're going to make a lower third that has the same dimensions and is divided up exactly into thirds in order to do the lower third under all these folks. Or if you wanted to, you could create a, an, a, uh, a quote unquote lower third, a, a PNG file, that would actually uh, be three picture frames. And so you could frame in each person and then have background above it and, and a framing in between it and then lower third that identified the speakers underneath it. So there's a lot you can do and then just use this as the, as the, um, what would you call it, as, as, the, as the camera shot. Yep, you would use this as the camera shot. So that's the, uh, <laughs> well, let's see, let's go back to that other crazy, crazy shot that we had, the mirror shot. Um, oh no, it wasn't the mirror shot, it was the, uh, 
Oh, it was a mirror shot, and then it was the correct. That's right. It was this shot. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so, you know, two of me were exact opposites. <laughs> but opposites attract. There are lots of things you can do with it. The nice thing is you can't break it. If, if the module starts doing things and you can't figure out what it's done and you think you're dead-ended, just right-click on it. We'll go back to it. Right-click on it and remove the module. And then start fresh. Go back to Modules Add. And it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. That's one of the beauties, I think, of VidBlaster is that it really is easy to learn. It's very intuitive. And most of the time, you get what you think you get when you try to do something. Now, some of the more advanced features, like you know, dialing in chroma key, obviously that that takes a little bit of a little bit of time, um, and with time you get you get really good at it. But uh, but this kind of stuff, this is this is falling off the log easy, falling off the log easy. Let's get rid of that. If you have any questions and you think I can help you with a question about VidBlaster, shoot me a note, Tom at thatvidblasterguide.com. I'd be delighted to, uh, to at least give it a shot, to live it a shot. Now, if it ends up being an extended project, we might ask you to, to, uh, to kind of join in with us and, um, and buy a support package, either a single item support package or an annual support package. We do have, um, we still are, let, thank you, I, thank you, I appreciate the reminder on that. We do still, uh, are still taking um, uh, applications, which is just an email, for our mentoring program. If you're involved in a project and you need some special assistance on it and you need a, you know, somebody standing by your elbow to give you a, a hand, uh, that would be what a mentor might do. Um, or if you're putting together a whole company that would do nothing but video and you want some, some advice and counsel on a, you know, an extended basis, not just one shot or two shots, but maybe, maybe three months to six months. Um, we're, we're offering that service to two um, entities, could be people, could be companies, um, at no charge for the next three to six months. And, uh, and we've had several applications, and we'll be looking through those and talking with folks and, and have been talking with folks, but don't want to forget, if you're interested, that we would love to have you join us um, with that and see if we can't help. And it, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, Coming up in two weeks, uh, Ted from Tally Lights is going to be our guest and talk about Tally Lights on VidBlaster and how he got into Tally Lights and what the Tally Lights on VidBlaster do and how they work. And, and we've got a set here in the studio, so we'll be showing them off. And we'll actually be adding them to our store um, as soon as I can get the, all the graphics together on that, we'll be putting them in the store. Uh, tally lights, I think, can go up to eight different lights and, uh, and have wired and wireless capabilities. So they're, they're pretty cool. We'll be going into some depth on those, and that'll be in two weeks. And then next week, um, on what is the date of next, next week? Next week is the 1st of April, April 1st. April Fool's Day. Oh, I should do a show on April Fool's Day because I'm perfect for it. I fit the part. <laughs> anyway, so there, we, we won't be doing a show next week. Uh, we'll be off on a trip. So we'll be back in two weeks. But um, if you made it to the end of the show and you're watching us on YouTube, by now you got to subscribe. I mean, if you made us all the way to the end, you you, you got to subscribe. For those guys that, uh, that made it to the end of the show live, you know, that says something about their psychology. You know, they're, they've got to screw loose <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> well, enough insults. That's right. You can go in and get me insulted anywhere. You don't have to come here to be insulted. Now, I'm Tom Sinclair, that Vid Blaster guy. It really was a treat to, to bring the show to you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and, and you want to add a comment or a question, please feel free. Uh, shoot me a line, Tom, at that vidblasterguy.com. I'd be happy to help you however I can. Obviously, and I should have said this at the beginning of the show, full disclosure, I am a an authorized, authorized vidblaster reseller, so I'd be delighted to help you with uh, your first purchase of vidblaster or an upgrade on any previous purchase. We can do that for you, no problem. Happy to help. So that's it for the show. Thanks so much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Well, not next week, but in a couple weeks. 
Y'all take care. Oops, now i got to figure out how to get out of this show. It's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. <laughs>